Knee joint space width and knee joint space narrowing are commonly used metrics to quantify the state of knee degeneration and changes over time. The three-dimensional geometry of the knee is complex. Interpreting two-dimensional radiographic images of the knee can be challenging. This video is intended to assist with this challenge. This is a view looking down on the tibia plateau of a right knee. Thin slice computed tomography exams of the knee were digitally embedded with spherical markers at the medial and lateral most aspects of the mid-coronal plane of the tibia. This is where joint space width would ideally be measured. A rod was digitally embedded, connecting the two spherical markers and representing the mid-coronal plane. In this knee, the rod passes at or just below the tibial bone surface. Tubular markers were added along the anterior and posterior rims of the medial and lateral tibial bone surfaces. Note that the posterior markers are shorter than the anterior markers. Tubular markers were also added to the surfaces of the medial and lateral femoral condyles immediately above the mid-coronal plane of the tibia, based on the knee position when the computed tomography exam was obtained, digitally reconstructed. Anterior-posterior radiographs were generated from the CT scan with, and without, the digitally added markers. The markers were assigned a CT attenuation level of metal. Digitally reconstructed radiographs were created with the Plastimatch software, using parameters of typical knee radiographs. This animation helps to appreciate the 3D position of the markers that were added to the CT exam. Note that the green rod connecting the spherical markers is at the mid-coronal plane of the tibia. The femoral markers are located directly above the green rod. This is a digitally reconstructed radiograph with 8 degrees of vertical beam tilt, showing the appearance of the markers. The blue lines highlight the markers added to the interior rims of the tibial plateau. They can be identified as the longest markers on the radiographs, the yellow lines highlight the markers added to the posterior rims of the tibial plateau. They can be identified as the shortest markers on the radiographs. The red lines highlight the markers added to the surfaces of the medial and lateral femoral condyles directly above the mid-coronal plane of the tibia. The green circles highlight the markers added to the medial and lateral most aspects of the tibial plateau. The green line highlights the rod added to mark the mid-coronal plane of the tibia. The vertical beam tilt for the digitally reconstructed radiographs was varied between plus 12 and minus 12 degrees to simulate the variability encountered in clinical radiographs. Joint space width is commonly measured from the femoral condyle to the most prominent radiographic shadow of the tibial plateau. That shadow could be the anterior or posterior rim of the plateau, or the subchondral bone. The most prominent shadow depends on the beam tilt, relative to the plane of the tibial plateau. At certain amounts of beam tilt, a radiographic shadow can be seen that is from neither the interior or posterior rims. This can confound joint space width measurements. Measuring joint space width in the mid-coronal plane avoids the need to decide which radiographic shadow to use. Note that the medial and lateral most aspects of the tibial plateau are easily identifiable landmarks to locate the mid-coronal plane of the tibia in radiographs. Comparing radiographs at 0 degrees and 12 degrees of vertical beam tilt, side by side, the green lines indicate joint space width measurements in the mid-coronal plane.
The yellow lines indicate joint space width measured using the most prominent radiographic shadow of the tibial plateau. Note the differences in joint space width between the two methods for 0 degrees versus 12 degrees of vertical beam tilt. Recall that these two radiographs were simulated from the same CT exam, so the measured joint space width should be the same in both radiographs. Markers were similarly placed in a CT exam of a degenerated knee to visualize the effect of beam tilt on joint space width measurements. Note that there is minimal joint space width on the medial side. Digitally reconstructed radiographs with between minus 12 and plus 12 degrees of beam tilt are shown. Consider how joint space width measurements would differ if the most prominent radiographic shadow was used versus the mid-coronal plane method.